Hi, this is Joan, and uh, I don't know, I guess I'll call this Joan Reviews, and it is possibly a review on one of the most reviewed movies I've ever seen, and it is Netflix's new film called Leave the World Behind. Now, I stopped on this particular still because a lot of people are reviewing this movie. And one thing I want to say is, Julia Roberts annoyed me very, very much, pretty much throughout the entire film. And the film showcased the color blue so much that I feel like I've been blue, blue intoxicated or something. Everything is blue here. She wears blue all the time. I saw another video by the guy from Go Black to Africa, and he focused, I think somebody else did, focused on this is a feminist movie, and um, that one particular scene, she screamed at her husband to get in the car, and yeah, I do see their point. Not that I have anything against feminism or anything too much. I just personally found her irritating. And she was definitely portraying what you would call a Karen. But I think that that was done on purpose. And I think that everything, of course, was done on purpose, as Go Black to Africa explained also. So being bathed in blue is, of course, something that is relevant. But um, overall, I didn't think the movie was that interesting. It was kind of like if you're going to be a scary movie, could you be a scary movie? But I think this was way beyond that, and that was the point. So I saw all kinds of people talking about all different kinds of symbolism in it. Well, just in case you haven't actually seen the movie, uh, my interest in it was from the trailer. And the trailer showed this white family in this luxurious house. And there is a black guy and his daughter knocking on the door saying, hey, it's my house. So that was like, whoa, what kind of movie is this? It reminded me of us when the neighbors, when the, the son said, there's a family in our driveway. This kind of reminded me of that. Actually, the whole movie kind of gave me an us and a get out feel. And uh, even before I get into the plot, I wanted to point out the music. The first song they played, I don't, I didn't know who that guy was. I don't even know who the second guy was. But if you watch the movie, listen to the song that they played. It was never going to give you up. So I had noticed the scene where there was a emphasis on 1619. And I thought, oh, this film must have something to do with black people. Of course, the, the black guy saying this is his house is definitely a tip off. But, you know, anyway, when I saw that, it was like, OK, I don't know if they're saying they're for or against you know, enslavement of people. So let's keep watching because the, uh, because it wasn't, it wasn't so slow that I wanted to turn it off, but it, it wasn't so active that I was gung-ho about watching it. Actually, I really liked, um, and I, I will get his name wrong, but Masher Shala, something like that. Well, anyway, this guy here and partially because it is a habit of mine to look up the zodiac signs of the characters or the actual actors and he's an Aquarius so it's like yay for the Aquarius I don't think I have seen many Aquarians uh, Aquarians that I think are sexy so that's an aside but I thought he was so elegant but anyway um, back to the plot like I said it's a white family, Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, both Scorpios, which I thought was very, very interesting because generally every other Zodiac sign except Aquarius is supposed to at least theoretically be afraid of 
of Scorpios. I saw a joke book once that said, the only sign that's not afraid of Scorpios is Aquarius, and that's because they're not smart enough to be afraid. So I should have been offended, but I, I thought it was really funny. But anyway, um, this is Ethan Hawke's back. He's opening the door to this, you know, black guy whose name Maharshala, something like that. I mean, no disrespect. Because like I said, I think he's a sexy guy. But anyway, um, they open the door to him and Julia Roberts is acting like a Karen. And she's like, I don't know these black people. She didn't actually say that. She just said they're strangers. But um, yeah, I, you really do get the impression that's what she meant by it. So he is, uh, I think there's always a reason why they pick people from certain zodiac signs to play certain roles. And I think even the fact that you see him, he's wearing a tux, of course, and it's explained. But just the fact that he's in something that is black and white with a very, very strong contrast. Now, uh, there's another guy, friend, Chot Pearson, who says that, okay, black and white is a sign of somebody who's playing both sides. And to a certain extent, I do think that that might have been the point of him having him introduced in a tux and also introduced with his back to the camera. When you watch it, you'll see that. Or, you know, you might have noticed it when it first came on. But, um, of course, the wife does not want him to come. But there's a little, another aside that I don't think anybody else noticed. And I'm not sure if that's what they actually said. But in the beginning, when Julia Roberts and uh, Ethan Hawke are first into the house, she says something about the security system. I think she said it's an Othello system or something. And if you know Shakespeare, Othello was the guy who had a white wife. Um, he was a black African. It was played by, the last version I know of it was played by Lawrence Fishburne. He was Othello. And that was the one time Lawrence Fishburne was really sexy. So, um, yeah, let me keep going. Now, this is another shot where I think the colors might be telling you something or just the contrast. Uh, even though it's his house, this is his daughter right here. Uh, her name is Ruth. Um, his name is George. His name is, what is, Clay. Her name is Amanda. I think uh, they give a lot of thought to the names too because Ruth and George are very old names. And, you know, actually, they could have been names that were used during the time of slavery uh, by by uh, African-Americans. Yeah, it could it could also be talking about biblical Ruth. But um, his name is Clay. And I do think that he was very formable like Clay. And Amanda is a strong name. And it actually even has man in it. So I think that, yeah, a lot of thought went into that. And here you see these people are all in nature. You know, like I said, even though it is his house, he's outside and it's a natural setting. Inside, everything is totally modern here. There's not even a plant or anything in there as far as I can see. I'm not sure what that is in his hand, but it is a very broad contrast. And of course, he's in... These people are in the light. These people are in the dark. And it is framed. So everything is very noticeable. And like I said, they have him. They're both in evening attire. But still, that contrast, the black and white that he's wearing. If you can remember a very old film, The Spook Who Sat By The Door. He kind of reminds me of him. Like on the outside, yeah, it's a whole lot of black showing there. But uh, on the inside, he is kind of, um, what is it? He likes to please the non-black people. Even the ones who are in his home, he is very, well, hyper polite, you could say. Now that contrast with his daughter, Ruth, who is an Aries. Now, the two most uh, combative or even strongest signs in the Zodiac, the ones most likely to, to 
most likely for you to not want to get into any kind of physical or emotional altercation with are Scorpio and Aries. She's an Aries. And she and the Scorpio don't like each other and kind of don't hide it. Both of them, their initial dislike may have racial overtones. But like I said, I don't think that they cast people without looking at their zodiac signs. I couldn't quite figure out Ethan Hawke because he is, his name is Clay, but he is a Scorpio. But then again, I don't know what his rising sign is. And for the most part, from what I've seen, Scorpio men are pretty nice. They are, I guess because my ex may have had Scorpio rising, but um, generally, the Scorpio men I've met have been nice, but I haven't been in a close relationship with them. But I do think that, like Ethan Hawke, they tend to appear friendly and they talk a lot. So maybe that is the reason for them having a Scorpio in a position where he is not attempting to dominate anyone and again that might be the reason for the name clay now further on with the plot okay so um george and his daughter ruth they go back to their home and they pay the people there ethan hawk and julia roberts a thousand dollars because they have that is, um, Julia and Ethan rented the house um, for a weekend. And because the owners, Ruth and George, are returning, they're saying, okay, we aren't telling you you have to leave. For a fact, we'll even go stay in the basement and give you half your money back. So the thing I thought was, okay, this is a big white house now it's probably saying something that is white but i couldn't figure as big as that house is it only has one bedroom upstairs i don't understand that why couldn't you go sleep somewhere else why did you choose the basement now some people are saying that the basement because it's all wooden looks like the a slave ship could be and you know what like i said I didn't hear anybody comment on that song that they played in the beginning, Never Gonna Let You Go. And I kept, when I was listening to it, I kept thinking, what does that have to do with anything? He, who's trying to go who, and who's not letting them? But um, that's something that you can look at. I wanted to point out the, the difference between George, the physical difference between George and his daughter, Ruth. Now, when you think about, like I said, I'm not sure if Julia Roberts said this is an Othello uh, security system. It sounded like it, but, you know, maybe it was something else because it's not like I know security systems. But it seems that they, when they were casting, they wanted to put as much of a contrast between the father and the daughter as they could. Now, this guy I looked him up, Masher. Maharshala, and I thought he was African. He's not. He's African American. But um, the thing is, he looks very African. I mean, African Americans are Africans. We're just here um, because we were brought here. So we all are. But I think that our general perception is that as African Americans, you might be a little lighter than Africans. And that's true sometimes, sometimes it's not. But I'm looking at stereotypes. And also by the fact that his name was Maha Sharla, I thought, oh, okay, maybe he's, um, maybe he's not African American. But he is. But the point is, he's tall, thin, and dark. Now, the person they cast as his daughter is small uh, and light brown. Now, I, I think that there's another, well, I know that there's another scene where she's speaking of a mother. It's the scene that has made all of the non, well, many of the non-black people upset, where she says, don't trust people in these times, especially not white people. Even mom knows that. Now, why would she say even mom knows that? Like, 
somehow mom might not feel that way or she might have a different feeling uh, about non-black people. So I'm figuring they're kind of trying to tell you on the slide that this man is, he is black on the outside, but on the inside, he's kind of got a little bit of something else going on there as far as who he looks out for. And as someone else pointed out, when he went to talk to the neighbor, another Aries, Kevin Bacon, when he went to talk to him, he left his daughter alone. Now, she, they keep saying she's an adult, but they also made a point of casting a person who looks very young. She has a very girlish face, which is a compliment. She'll be happy about that in later years. You know, I'm not trying to say anything about it, bad about her, but I do think that they wanted to have a contrast so that you would recognize that in order for him to have a daughter, this fair skin. He probably had to get someone who had to have her with someone who was either non-black or very, very close to non-black. And I think that that is part of what they want you to see. Like I said, this movie reminded me it has an us vibe, a get out vibe. Somebody said something about Starbucks coffee. It's a scene where they're drinking coffee thinking everything's normal. Actually, to me, that just meant um, I had seen a video years ago where they said Starbucks just means bucks for the stars. And the stars they were referring to were the uh, the Israeli people in Israel. So maybe that has something to do with what's currently going on and money that's being sent over there. And again, you see blue. This movie will have you feeling like I have blue overload. Could you, could you, did you, did you people forget that there were other colors? Now, this is the basement that George and Ruth moved into which, like I said, it had to have some kind of meaning because when I looked at the house, I thought, good grief, as big as that house is, you only have one bedroom on the main floor or on the second floor. That doesn't even make any sense. The house looked like it was made in three different parts. Surely you must have a bedroom in one of those parts. And also, looking at this map, which they made a point of showing you, it's all about division too. But yes, this is an extremely wooden basement. and also, how can your house be that big and your basement be that small? I mean, I know, yeah, you can do it, but I kind of think maybe it's not usual. And it does look like somebody really, really loved wood. And also, notice the rug. It's red. Red always means, well, not always, but often means blood. And the fact that you have it on the floor. Somebody, to me, does le lend credence to the concept of this being them going to a slave ship. But you also have to consider that if that's what this is symbolizing, then this man volunteered to go there because he could have walked in and said, you know what, this is my house. You go in the basement and I'll, you know, I'll let you stay in the basement for tonight. But tomorrow you, I'm giving you half of your money back and you can leave. I think that might have been what his daughter wanted, but um, no, he did not do that. And I'm not going to give you the entire everything that happens in it because, you know, to me, the movie was it's interesting because of how many reviews it's gotten. If I had not, I don't know, if it hadn't been so, if the trailer hadn't been so interesting, where it made it seem like these people are saying it's their house. How is it their house? And if it's their house, why are you in it? Yeah, if it hadn't made it seem like some sort of suspenseful mystery, I probably wouldn't have paid much attention to it. But instead, it is kind of a study of a movie where there are so many subliminal elements to, to investigate that you know, you watch it over and over trying to figure out why are you playing Never Gonna Give You Up in the beginning of the movie. That's the second song. And I don't think anybody's mentioned that. But um, let's continue. 
the big blue and red boat coming toward them as they're on the shore. And again, blue, blue, blue water. Of course, water is always blue, but still, blue boat. And the boat is called the White Lion. Now, I thought, again, okay, I guess this movie has something to do with race. Because why are they, you know, it's kind of like um, in the Bible, the tribe of Judah is considered, is represented by the lion. But this is a white lion. And it is coming ashore. And... um. If you listen to Hebrew Israelites, they'll say, okay, well, the real Israelites are black. So that would be a black lion. But here you're showing, you make a point of showing that there is a big blue and red boat ship, whatever, coming um, on the sand. And the people are just watching it. Now, another review was like, it's showing how people won't notice what's happening what's coming until it's all the way up on them the only person in the family um i'm not sure i don't think i mentioned that ethan hawk and julia roberts have two children they have a 15 year old boy who is very mean to his sister i couldn't figure that out why is he so mean and and uh, uh they have a 13 year old daughter her name is rose his name is Archie. And again, very old names, surprisingly old. Uh, but in any case, Rose is obsessed with the TV series Friends. And she wants very badly to know how it all ends. Does, uh, do, do Josh, is it Josh? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the names of the characters and friends. Do Ross, do Ross and Rachel get together in the end? Now, the thing is, like I said, um, the only people in that joke book who were listed as not afraid of Scorpios were Aquarians. And this little girl is obsessed with uh, friends as to whether or not Ross, a Scorpio, gets back together with Rachel and Aquarius. And like I said, you might think, yeah, so what? That doesn't even matter. I, I do think that they pay a lot more attention than you think to the zodiac signs of the characters that they, of the actors that they hire to play certain characters. I think that, you know, it all has to do with math, numbers and such. And yeah, I just thought that was interesting. But anyway, the little girl is obsessed. And the thing to me was, until they said she was 13, I thought she was maybe eight or nine because she's very small. And she also has a very youthful look about her. And she's very small. So it's really, it was really surprising to me that you have this boy who's supposed to be 15 and he's obnoxious to his little sister, though she puts up with him and and doesn't seem to be upset about it. I guess she was to represent the father's temperament, whereas the older brother, who is very lustful, they should probably marry him all soon, but he, I guess, was to represent the mother's temperament. So I just thought that was an interesting thing to bring up. So if this is predictive programming, you might want to pay attention to this map. But in any case, some people said that there is a, what is it, a QR thing right here. And you can see it when you look closer. And when they pulled it up, I'm not sure if that was the one where they saw a, a abandoned carnival thing, uh, like Great America. And if so, I think that it's basically telling you that, okay, this is the plan. Well, at least part of this country is going to be like that abandoned amusement park. Like America has been kind of an amusement park. Everybody wanted to come here because everything looks so, so great, like so much fun. And I think that they're, if this is predictive programming, they're telling you that's what you might have to look forward to.
a little girl and she is wearing a shirt you can't see it here that says nasa and um yeah they're part of the cyber attack or some other attack is a very loud noise that shatters glass well it doesn't shatter it it cracks it and it makes people cover their ears and uh the little girl is very sensitive so you know right now she's covering her ears and i guess they're telling you it has something to do with nasa i don't know and i you know i'm just saying maybe but in any case like i said if you believe in predictive programming you might want to look at that map a little more on the side this is kevin bacon uh what happens as far as the plot is the son gets sick it may have been from a tick it may have been from the noise they don't really tell you but um maha sharla decides to go visit his neighbor who also was the contractor on his house. So they they know each other pretty well and they're pretty close friends. And you see how Kevin Bacon granted them, greeted them rather. The thing is, as far as personalities, I liked, I really liked Kevin Bacon. He made sense to me. I can understand why you're doing what you do. And also, like I said, I thought Mahashala was sexy. So yeah, that was that was the most interesting thing in the movie to me, but okay you know i'm not discouraging anyone from watching it if it's yeah you might want to watch it because you've seen so many reviews and if you're watching this one thank you that's so sweet of you but anyway the thing about kevin bacon is he's got a he's an aries he's got a red door behind him aries is associated with red and he's also got a lucky uh horseshoe i thought that was pretty interesting his house is also white um, he's dressed like somebody who would be holding a rifle, you know, yeah, of course, that was a, an important detail. But um, somebody was saying, one of the reviews was saying that this is showing you that in the end, people are going to defend their own nation. I don't know, maybe if that's the case, why isn't he defending his? But, you know, I don't know. Like I said, I thought he was sexy. I didn't think what he did was totally correct um i thought it was very i thought he was very elegant you don't see that very much anymore um as much as i like idris elba i can't see him being as generous in this film which is probably why they didn't cast him or maybe he wouldn't have wanted it who knows but in any case yeah i, I do hope that you know if any of you have watched it Please give me a comment and let me know what you think. And also, like I said, Kevin Bacon is an Aries and they've got some gasoline down there in a red container. I think they're letting you know this guy can be rather fiery or something. But in any case, they go to him and ask him. And I thought one thing was very, very interesting that Ethan Hawke said. Well, I couldn't find the still from when Ethan Hawke said it, but he said something I thought was very, very interesting, and it reminded me of Schindler's List. Uh, he had said earlier, or his wife told Ruth what he did for a living, and he's a college professor, um, English and Media Studies. And earlier, he was talking to his wife, Julia Roberts, about... Um, writing a forward for one of his students and him not knowing if they actually really listened to him um he says when he's talking to kevin bacon that he is a useless man without his gps and his cell phone he is useless and i think that that is one of the points of this movie that masha harla here he can read curves. He can figure things out. Kevin Bacon here, he can figure things out. And he he stocked up and got some weapons and paid attention to not only the newspaper, but what his neighbors were doing. But Ethan Hawke, the, the Scorpio, the most powerful sign in the Zodiac, I think, had to admit, hey, all I know how to do is use technology. So I think it's kind of a warning there that you might be cerebral, but you might want to acquire some other skills or or some weapons or something. 
No, I'm not advocating weapons. I, I hope that that's okay to say, but it's from their movie. I, I didn't make it. So if it's predictive programming, they are at least warning you. Oh, and I should mention that um, Barack and Michelle were the executive executive producers of this film. So a lot of people are speculating that this is something that they want people to know, which is okay if that's the case. That was nice of them to give a warning. And that the director, his name is Esmail, and um, the, the director said that he tried to dramatize everything and make it more exciting. And when he expected that when Obama, and I think this is what they said, I hope I'm getting it right. So, you know, take it with the grain of sand. Or is it salt? Either way, um, he said that when he thought that when Barack Obama read it, and Michelle also, let's not forget the women, um, he felt that Barack would uh, tell him that he over-dramatized it, but he said he was really shocked when he said, no, you, you left out some important details. So, you know, I do think you could take this as a warning, or it could be propaganda. Actually, pretty much everything is propaganda, but that doesn't mean it can't give you some interesting information. Now, this also could be a warning about electric cars. Um, I'm sorry, uh, driverless cars. So, I guess driverless cars are electric. I'm not sure. But in any case, uh, Julia Roberts is out. They're trying to escape and they she sees all they see all these cars on the road so she volunteers to get out and see what's going on and ethan hawk is like cool i'm clay what do whatever you want to do but anyway she gets up and she goes and looks and then she notices hey there's nobody in these cars and they're all new cars this is weird so this is where uh um Go Black to Africa got upset because she screamed at her husband to get in the car. And she even used a curse word. And he, you know, got in the car and she proceeded to do all these strategies and things to keep, do all these tr strategic movements to keep them from getting hit in the blue cars. Like somebody had one crayon and just painted everything blue. But anyway. Um, his thing was that's go black to go black to Africa was that this is a feminist move, movie and it's showing all the women as being the strong ones. Uh, well, not all the women, it was only three women in it, but Julia Roberts is usurping her man, she even cursed at him. And it occurred to me that that is the major problem women and men are having with each other and that's that men feel that only they should be respected that if he had screamed at her get in the car and then uh proceeded to get in the driver's seat that would have been okay but her doing it is just improper it's wrong she's not showing respect but everybody wants respect so i, I don't think I think in an emergency situation, you say what you say, and it saved their car and possibly their lives that he didn't that he didn't object to what she said or the manner in which she said it. But um, I do think that they did show it in some ways as Julia Roberts from the very beginning, um, packing. The, their bags to go on a vacation and she hadn't even talked to him about do you want to take one so i think that they were trying to show her as a controlling kind of karen type but um i don't think that the whole film to me does not really seem to be so much about feminism and even if it it just seems like when you look at gender and say well men should do this and women should do that you're not taking temperament into account and also the thing with julia roberts and ethan hawk was that when you really look at it even though he was 
he seems to have a gentler personality. When the final decision was made as to how to deal with Marsha Rala and uh, Maha, I'm trying to get their correct names, um, their real names right, but let's say when it came to them dealing with George and Ruth, it was Ethan Hawke who made the final decision and she didn't argue with it. And also when you look at it here, she may have screamed, but she was correct. And there wasn't a lot of time to explain that, yes, dear, you need to get in the car and drive because I've seen all these other cars and they are driverless. That would have taken a lot more time. And I think that it was good that he trusted her decisions. The same, her decision there, the same way he trusted her decision when he woke up and she said, we're going on vacation. I think the fact that he decided, he made the final decision about uh, George and Ruth staying in their own home shows that he could speak up when he wanted to. It's just some of the time he felt it was easier to allow her to have a say in the course of their life too. But in any case, I'm not trying to give you the whole plot. And this is just me looking at the trailer. In the car, don't they look scared? Yes, they do. That was very, very good acting, I think. His name is Mahershala Ali. Isn't that cute? That's a nice name. Here's Ethan Hawk, um, Clay, with this stupid picture. This picture, I kept thinking, are they in different rooms? Why is the picture different? Sometimes it looks like rockets. Somebody else said it looked like the clans. I just thought, what's with your picture? And again, it's blue. Somebody's obsessed with blue. I know it's symbolic, but it's still kind of irritating to me. This is Ruth, and Ruth held her own in this movie. I mean, like I said, um, she has a scene with, well, she's from the very beginning. She and Julia Roberts both are kind of like, I don't like you, and I don't like you either. But um, I thought that I don't know. I uh, haven't seen any other of her work, but I thought that she did. I thought they all did an excellent job. Um, I just thought the movie was just not what I thought it was going to be. I guess I was looking for action, and this is thought-provoking. Yeah, that's probably it. The animals are acting strange. The gentle deers are all just ganging up and looking at them. Now, they kept talking about in this movie about the animals are trying to tell us something. And I looked at it and thought, no, those animals look like they want to eat you. Now, it reminded me of some recent news stories where people reported animals attacking them. It started with squirrels and it was dogs just coming in and foxes, they're losing their fear of people. So this is one time when I totally disagreed with the characters because these animals don't look like they're trying to tell you something. They're trying, they're looking at you maybe the way a hungry person would look at them. They, I mean, that's just what I picked up from it, but you can watch it yourself. It reminds me of an, another old movie of old friends getting together and staying at a cabin in the woods. Old friends should never go to cabins in the woods, according to the movies. If you have an old friend who calls you and says, let's go to the cabin in the woods, you should hang up on them. But in any case, it reminded me of that movie because they were, I can't remember the name. I can only remember that they looked out their window and every kind of animal nearby was running in the same direction. They weren't fighting. They weren't trying to eat each other. They were just running. And I thought to myself, when that happens, you should get a backpack or a bike and just follow them. Just go where they're going because obviously they know something you don't know. But here, these animals are not running except to the people. And they're not running like one at a time. They're ganging up. And I just don't think that it requires all that many different deers to give you a message. I think something like that happened to you. You might need some sort of protection or something. But anyway, that's just what I think. Again, you see, you see what I'm telling you? Somebody really likes blue and secondary, they like white. Because 
It's like they had two crayons and they were just determined that they were going to use them all the way down to the nub. Again, I know it's symbolism, but man, was that a lot of blue. This is a Hispanic woman that Ethan Hawke found in the, <clears throat> he was driving, trying to find somebody to tell him what was happening. And he found a Hispanic woman in the, like in the, in the, on the plane, whatever you want to call that. The problem was he couldn't speak Spanish and she couldn't speak English. All he could figure was that she's very excited about something. I don't quite know what. Neither one of us have a telephone. If we did, they don't work. Now, go back to Africa. And I know I'm mentioning him, mentioning him a lot, but I've watched several reviews on this. His was the last one. And, you know, I thought it was very, very interesting. Um, But he, he um put it in Google Translate or his translator. And what she was basically telling him was that, you know, help because I'm away from my home. Now I couldn't figure out how did she walk that far? Did her house disappear? What happened to her house? There were a couple of other occasions where things happened to people's houses, but they didn't tell you what happened to it. Why did it happen to your neighbor's house, but it didn't happen to your house? I don't know. But in any case, uh, the way he translated it, basically she was telling him that we have to get out of here because something came and it has a bunch of red stuff coming out the sky and animals are acting crazy looking at me like I'm a beef burger. Well, she didn't say that. That's what I'm adding. But um, everything that's going on, she pretty much warned him about and was, I guess she wanted to ride with him. And he rolled up his window and drove away. Now he did feel bad about it, but it's kind of like, uh, what do you do? If I put her in my car, I don't know what she's saying. I don't know where she wants to go. But I think in a situation like that, if she doesn't look dangerous and if you have something to protect yourself, you might want to uh, put her in the car and take her with you and hope you can together find someone who speaks Spanish or yeah, well, electronic things probably don't work, so a translator wouldn't help. But um, I'm not sure what this symbolized, except that, I don't know, that maybe you bring Hispanics here, but you don't know what they're saying. I don't know. If you know, you can tell me. But um, yeah, maybe it's that people are being warned but they can't understand the language. Maybe that's what the whole point of this was. But in any case, um, there was some sexual tension. Ruth felt that Ethan Hawke wanted her, you know, in, a, in an intimate way. I didn't see that. I thought his son most definitely did. And you might want to marry that one off as soon as he turns 18. I'm only kidding. Um, but um, there was definitely some tension between... <clears throat> Mahashala and Julia Roberts to the point where he promised that he was going to get help for her son, even to the point where he left his daughter there by herself, because I think that it's telling you that, you know, he is, his character was very um, attracted and that maybe his wife it kind of hints that maybe that was a biracial union. And I kind of think just by the fact there's such a contrast between the way the way his character looked and the way his daughters did that, you know, something else is going on. And it's, they're telling you something else, too, about that. There he is being very uh, protective. He made a promise and he decided to keep it. But contrasting to that, Julia Roberts also told him that nothing would happen to his daughter. She would make sure of it. And I always listen to things like that and think, you can't even guarantee your own life. How are you going to guarantee somebody else's? But people say stuff like that all the time. I don't see a clip from that. And uh, like I said, I'm not trying to just be a total um, spoiler person. But I will, yeah, if you haven't seen the movie, please see the movie and then watch this. Yeah, please watch this, but um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show that. I'll tell you the ending 
Um, I thought it was a very unsatisfactory ending. I hate when they leave things ambiguous. Look, I paid my money or, you know, you even have to pay monthly for Netflix. You could at least tell me how this thing ends. But uh, this is uh, still of all the cars being all tied up. And it's it's really hard to see, to figure, unless you turn your head sideways. And then you can see that it's a curving road. You know, maybe you can see it without that. And you can see the city on the other side of the water. Yeah, I hadn't even noticed that because it was hard to figure when it was straight up and down. But this is the city. And the road doesn't go up in the air. I thought it was showing that something came like a hurricane and knocked the road up. But it's not up. It curves over here. However, something here, um, I don't know. I was thinking maybe you all should get a bike. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a warning that, hey, your cars may not work. Maybe you should get a bike or skates or skating board or something else. I'm, I'm not being facetious. I'm thinking that in desperate times, you might have to look at other alternative kind of things to do. I, I've often thought, you know, Flintstone cars seem like that might not be a bad invention. I know that's really, really going back to the 60s, the cartoon, the Flintstones. But they had cars that they ran, you know, with foot power. I was thinking, why don't you like put bikes in cars so people can have the insulation of a car, but they don't have to use gas or anything. But, you know, that's just a simple thought. And, uh, well, this was my view of this Leave the World Behind. Not all that interesting movie. Well, it was interesting if you, you know, really look at the symbolism. And I guess I kind of wanted, expected the easy way out where you just tell me. Because even in conversations, I find it irritating when people want to tell you something, but they hint. If you got something to say, say it. If not, just leave me alone. But, um, yeah, it, it it wasn't a bad movie. I watched it a couple of times because every time I watched it, well, not, you know, the first time I watched it, I just thought, yeah, whatever, it has something to do with slavery and black people, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't even really care. But then I'd watch a review and I'd say, oh, wow, I missed that. Let me go see. Because I really didn't see much in it except for that song. Um, and when she said Othello, and then um when he was in the car, Ethan Hawke was in the car and trying to get um GPS and or maybe a radio station, I don't know, but it kept showing you sixteen nineteen. And then the boat coming in with a white lion on it coming ashore, and even it had blue and red on the bottom, like you know, like you know, blood. But uh other people had so many other things. I thought, oh, shoot, I didn't even notice that. Like, I didn't notice here that this was the city. It just looked like more abstract art, like the picture that kept changing. And that was really annoying to me because I was like, is the picture changing? Is that some new kind of art where it changes on its own? Or are they in a different room? And also, if your house is so big, why do you have to sleep in the basement? And even like your daughter said, it's your house. You don't really have to sleep in the basement. But these are things you can consider when you watch it. And I hope you do, and you probably will, because, you know, it's got so much advertising. And I guess the point is to make you think someone is trying to tell you something without telling you. But um, I'm kind of a straightforward person, and I kind of prefer if, you know just come right out and say it but we don't live in a world where you can really do that too much anymore so you guys i know i haven't been on here very much i haven't been on here really at all so if any of you have watched this far or watched even a little i appreciate it you're beautiful i can't even see you but i know it i feel it in my soul you guys take care and have a great rest of your day